Hi, and welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today I'm going to show you how to take a 10-bit MKV video file, which plays in almost no software and to my knowledge no set-top boxes, and convert it into a much more universally compatible 8-bit MKV format. So without any further ado, let's go! So in order to convert your 10-bit MKVs into 8-bit MKVs, you're going to need three bits of free software, and I'll include the links to these in the show notes. The first one is the Combined Community Codec Pack. Incidentally, if all you're trying to do is be able to play these videos on your computer, you can stop after this step. Once you've installed the Combined Community Codec Pack, it comes with a media player called Media Player Classic, which uh, will play 10-bit MKVs. However, if you uh, truly want to convert them to play on other devices or what have you, then uh, let's continue on. The next one you're going to need is Xmedia Recode. The site is in German, but the program runs in English just fine. And the final one is MKV Toolnix. The uh, download link for this one's a little tricky to find. Just uh, click the downloads link here, and then go way down to the bottom of the page, and an installer. That's the link that you want. After you've downloaded and installed those in that order, you're going to want to open Xmedia Recode. Now for demonstration purposes, I have uh, recoded an episode of General Nerdery as a 10-bit MKV. You'll see here if I attempt to open this in VLC. Hello and welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today's our very first video game episode. In this case, I get a solid green screen with audio, but no picture. Uh, I've also seen in some cases where you uh, get a picture, but it's heavily distorted with lots of pixelization and uh, lots of errors in the color. So you want to take this and convert it into a more universally accepted format. You can either simply drag it into the program, into this window here, or use the built-in file browser to locate the file and import it that way. Once it's in, simply click to highlight the video. And now we can select in what way we want to output it. First thing you want to do is select video only. Uh, I don't know why, but for some reason you cannot convert from 10-bit to 8-bit uh, and simultaneously encode the uh, video and the audio. So you need to do that separately. Over here under Profile, you're going to leave it on Custom. Format, you want to select Matroska Video. Under File Extension, the only option there will be is MKV after you've selected Matroska. Under codec here, MPEG-4 AVC slash H.264 is the one you want. Next we move on to video. These are the compression settings that we're going to uh, be using for the video. Now if you uh, have experience uh, with video encoding, you can figure this part out for yourself. But uh, if not, uh, give you a place to start. Uh, profile, if you're uh, encoding something that's in high definition, you are going to want to leave this as high profile. Uh, level 5, once again, for high definition. If it's 1080p, that is, you level 5. If it's 720p or lower, level 4.1, which is the default, will do just fine. Preset. This indicates how quickly you want to uh, attempt to encode the video. Of course, you can go very fast and it will uh, get done in a lot less time, but with uh, generally a larger file size and lower quality. Uh, you can go to the slowest setting, but that will take an exceedingly long period of time, potentially even days. Uh, I usually leave it on medium, which uh, on my computer takes about three and a half times the normal runtime of the video to process. Under tune, you want to set this to be appropriate for the kind of content that you're encoding. Animation, film, grain for anything shot on film with uh, an exceptional amount of film grain to it, and so forth. Under frame rate, very important, absolutely want to set this to keep original. These next two settings here are the ones that will most directly affect the file size that you're going to output. Under rate control mode, select constant quality. And uh, under the quality here, you can select any number between 0 and 64. The lower the number, the higher the quality and the larger the file size. The higher the number, the lower the quality and the smaller the file size. I recommend you start with somewhere around 16 and then you can experiment from there. But with 16, a 1080p video that's 24 minutes long will output at around 1 gigabyte in size, which I think is acceptable. There are lots of other settings that you can play with, but unless you are very experienced with high-level encoding, then I recommend you just leave those as they are. With that done, select the Jobs tab, and now you can select where you want to output the video. Simply click Browse. Go to the folder that you want to output to. I've already got one created here on my desktop. And select OK. Now add job. 
Now if we had more than one video that we wanted to encode, we could simply add another video now and then add another job, and so forth and so on, with as many videos as you would like. But since we only have the one, we will now tell it to encode. I am going to stop recording now because uh, the computer needs every bit of processing power that it can get to do this, and it's going to take a while. Alright, so that's done. It actually went faster than usual, only taking about double the length of the video, so that's pretty good. We'll just close this, and now we can close Xmedia Recode. Here's the file folder we output to, and here's the video. I'm just going to open this up with VLC to show you that it is, in fact, an 8-bit uh, file now. It plays just fine. Of course, it has no audio because we uh, separated the audio when we made this copy of it here. So, we need to fix that. Earlier we installed a bit of software called MKV Toolnix. Now we really only need one part of that, a program called MKV Merge. Here it is right here. And all we need to do is take the newly created video file, drag it into this input files list, and it shows us the individual tracks that make up that video file. We have the video stream itself, and we have some basically some metadata information. We're going to uncheck those. Anything that you uncheck will not be included in the uh, file when we re-output it. After doing that, drag the original video file into the input files list. This is the one, the 10-bit file, and uh, simply uncheck the video track. Your original video may have other things here, like subtitles and so forth. Leave all those checked. You only want to uncheck the video track of the original file. After that's done, Click Browse and uh, tell it where you want to output this file to and under what file name. We'll call this 8-bit. Click Save. And uh, this part goes really fast. I'm not even going to have to speed it up. Start muxing. And that's it. The whole thing took 12 seconds, and it probably would have went even faster if I wasn't actually uh, doing my screen recording at the same time, using up some CPU cycles. And here's our new video file with the audio and video reintegrated. I'm going to open it up in VLC again. Hello, and welcome to another episode of General Nerdery. Today's our very first video game episode. I'm going to show you how to see underground in Minecraft with transparent dirt, like... And that's it. We have successfully converted a 10-bit MKV into an 8-bit MKV. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you find it useful. If you did, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on General Nerdery.